I don't have any of my notes open. We live in a world where USB docks are becoming a necessity because people don't put enough storage inside the laptops and tablets and whatever. We're going to find out if this one that smashed through all of its Kickstarter goals is for you. Maybe it is, maybe it's not. I don't know. We'll find out, won't we, when we talk about it. I use OEM keys for a few different reasons. This is the price you're going to pay for Windows 11 Pro if you get a retail key. Let's check those prices on whokeys.com. $30, you know, we can do better. Put in TS25, click apply. There we go, 2322. Let's say you want to get a copy of Windows 10 Pro. Also have Windows 10 Pro, and right now that key still unlocks Windows 11. You can get Windows 10 Home, Windows 11 Home, and we have two flavors of Office. If you're sick of paying that monthly subscription, well, you can get yourself an offline version of Office 2019 or Office 2016. The other thing is OEM keys are generally locked to your hardware. So if you move it from one motherboard to another, you may need to get another key, but you'll have to get many, many, many keys to equal the price of one retail key. Let's go ahead and check out with our copy of Windows 11 Pro. All right, just put in my card info. There we go. Click on View Keys and Codes. Once you get to the User Center, click on Get the Key. You'll see your key right here in the middle. Go ahead and highlight that, copy that, press Start, and then type Activate. You'll see Activation Settings. Go ahead and click on that. And then right here it says Not Active. Just click on Change Product Key. Paste in our product key, and then click on Activate. Hey, look at that. Active. Head over to whokeys.com. Thanks to them for sponsoring. And now on to our regularly scheduled program. So this is the dot case smart USB-C hub 7-in-1 with M.2 and I think that's kind of the big deal for me is you got the M.2. We also have a 100 watt power delivery and if you're looking at it, yes you may have noticed it's got that fancy little LCD screen on there with some bright colors. It tells you about everything like the monitors, the refresh rates, the USB you've got plugged in. It tells you about the M.2 read and write, it tells you about the fan and other helpful information. So you've got all kinds of information right there. Get a load of that Kickstarter right there. Well, they just launched this 26 days to go. And I'm not sure where it's going to be by the time you watch this video. I'll try to get it out in a couple of days. But yeah, their pledge goal of 5000 and they've already raised this much. So yeah, not, not bad. Cover a few more of their advertised specs right here. It does have the touch screen. We have SD and TF card slots. They're on opposite sides of the unit. And those are both UHS-2, which is going to be around 90 to 100 megabytes per second. So 1,000 megabytes per second on the internal M.2, 90 to 100 megabytes. It's easy to remember with the TF and the SD card. The 100 watt power delivery is really handy. You can plug in your powered USB-C and then plug up your laptop or tablet with USB-C and not have to worry about plugging in any chargers. It'll all be charged and kept alive just by running through this. So on one side we have our SD and then we have USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports. We have USB-C there. Then we have USB type A as well. On the other side, we have HDMI, and again, that does 4K at 120 hertz. We have our power delivery USB-C, and then we have our TF card slot. And then on the end there is where we plug in our USB-C. So it also, take a look at this, it doesn't work with a few different things, which is interesting. Why doesn't it work with Alienware gaming laptops and Dell G series stuff? Like, what's going on there that's stopping it from working? Also doesn't work with Microsoft Surface and Nintendo Switch, but it does work with all of this right here. There you can see. Even the Steam Deck, so some Linux compatibility going on right there. Now, as far as under the hood, it supports a 2230 and a 2242-sized M.2. So those are the smaller-sized M.2. It's also going to be around 1,000 megabytes per second. So this is not the blazing fast speeds of USB 4 or Thunderbolt 3 or Thunderbolt 4 or whatever. It's a little bit slower, but for a lot of people who just need to have a bunch of stuff on the go and need a whole bunch of extra ports, that's not too big of a deal. Plus, it does support 4K at 120 hertz. So I think that's the first question is, do you need 40 gigabits per second? Do you need some ridiculously fast speeds or is this speed going to be okay? Let's do a test right now. So the read and the write are around 900 on both of them. It's not wildly fast or anything. You can see there's the random 4K IOPS. Now I'm going to minimize this. We'll take a look at Addo Disk Mark. 900 on the right and all the reads were almost 900 but not quite. So around 900 for everything we'll say for read and write. Now even if you put a faster M.2 in there it's going to cap out around 900 to 1000 megabytes per second. That's all you're going to get with this. You can also do other stuff at the same time, but this is 10 gigabits per second. In my experience, that's totally fine for 4K editing. That's also fine for watching media and playing video games and such. But if you're doing like 4K raw editing and you're working on like a professional, you know, like movie or something, it might not be quite enough for that. So, yeah. All right, so we've never got uh, over 49. 49 was the high. I don't know if I showed that part on the screen, but yeah, 48, 49 was where it was. Most of the time, never got to 50. So that means I can probably turn off this fan or turn it down a little bit because it's kind of loud. I'm going to see how it sounds on 80. It's really loud. Auto and then off. I'm going to turn it off and do the test again because it's really loud and I just want to see how it gets. 
All right, even the reeds are already well over 50, but like I said, it's not that big of a deal. We'll just see how hot it gets when we're doing the rights, but this is kind of fine. All right, we just hit 60, which is not a huge deal, but you know, it's warmer. All right, 61. All right, here's gonna be the hot spot on the test. 64, 65, 66, huh? All right, let's see if it gets any warmer right here. All right, so we got 67 right now, 68. And it even shows us right here on our little device. Hey, you're at 65 degrees Celsius. It tells you right here. So we're getting a readout right here on the screen. It'll let you know when it's warm. So you might want to turn on the fan if you're doing some heavy workloads. So we got up to 68 degrees during the test with no fan. You can see right there it was giving us a little red warning. So, so as you can see there, the, the fan is kind of needed if you're doing like heavy workloads, but if you're just using it to watch movies or play games, it's probably not that big of a deal. Maybe if you're rendering or doing something where it's reading and writing a whole lot, I would recommend turning the fan on, or if you're in a really warm environment and it's, you know, it's got a lot of warm air around it, you might want that fan on to just get a little bit of a breeze going. But the thing about the fan is it's tiny, and that means uh, tiny fans usually make really high-pitched noises. So in my opinion, it's a very unpleasant high-pitched sound. It's not too loud, but you can definitely hear it. So that's gonna be up to you whether or not you wanna turn that on or off. I like the fact that we can just turn it off. For something that's running 1,000 megabytes a second, it's not too big of a deal if it gets up into the 60s when it comes to temperature. It is nice to have the fan, but you know, those things are a little bit loud. So when I first saw the screen, I thought, oh, it's maybe just a little bit of a gimmick to have on the screen there, but then I realized it's actually quite functional. One of my favorite things about the screen is the fact that we have SSD health monitoring, and it'll tell you like, hey, if something's going on with your SSD and you can monitor the health right here, instead of having to like look in your operating system or whatever, that's very handy. All right, let's go through everything on the screen here. So I got two things plugged up right now. It's showing me my monitor right there. 75 Hertz, 1920 by 1080. And then I don't have any of my other stuff plugged in, but I do have the power delivery going. It's delivering 19 volts, 45 watts over here to my tablet. And there it's giving me the information about the SSD on the inside, the SK Hynix drive right there. There we go. Exception monitor, firmware updates. All right, I don't have any firmware to update right now. Store about me, there we go. Let's see what that is. Cool, all the information. And there's our fan settings right there. You know, maybe if they removed that fan, they could have fit a full size M.2 in there. And if it was like like a millimeter thicker, then you could put a heat sink on top. I would honestly rather have an M.2 with a heat sink than this fan, because I don't think a lot of the other components really need the fan. The USB doesn't need the fan. I mean, there's going to be some heat generated from all the currents going through there if you're running monitors and doing transfers with SD cards and stuff, but that's not that big of a deal. So I would have rather had just a little bit more room for um, an M.2, full-size M.2, and also a, a little bit of thickness so I could put a heat spreader on there or they could do like I've seen with some of the other drives out there on the market. Some of the other devices is put a thermal pad on the actual case and then have the case be a little bit thicker so that the aluminum of the case or the metal of the case will start to be your heat sink and draw some of that power away or draw some of that heat away. So yeah, I think they almost could have fit a full size drive in there. It's not that big of a deal, especially if you're, you know, buying an M.2 specifically for this. Then you can get, you know, a 2242 or 2230 size drive and be just fine. And you can get those in up to two terabytes. So for 95% of the people, that's okay. But I'm just a psychotic power user who is like, well, yeah, but can I get more? Maybe. Maybe I can't. I don't know. So go ahead and talk about some of the Kickstarter stuff here that you're going to get with this. They're not paying me for any of this. But the pledge over here, I feel like, is a very good deal. 129 bucks for all of this. It's very high quality, very well made. It comes with a little braided 40 gigabits per second USB cable that's capable of 240 watts. So that is a full featured USB 4 cable or USB 40 gigabits per second type C cable. There we go. Also comes with a tiny little screwdriver. It does not have a magnetic tip on there. So be careful with those tiny little screws. But yeah, this is all you need right there for 129 on that early bird special. After that runs out, you'll be able to get it for 149. And then there's a 219 comes with a couple of them, I believe. So yeah, pick the version that you want. It's all based on what you need. If this meets your needs, the screen is really cool. And I would like to see more devices like this and i'm glad they're you know getting this off the ground because that means we'll probably see more stuff that has this screen with this firmware you know and a bunch of other features so maybe we'll see bigger dock case devices and and and, and bigger units or different units that have different configurations that would be really cool you're probably already thinking about this aren't you dock case because your kickstarter is doing okay you're probably already thinking like we could do another one and reuse the same screen and the same stuff, which is totally cool because that screen is, is actually a decent selling point. 
for a lot of people. Let me know what you think about this in the comments. Also, we do have some stuff on sale over at epicpants.com, so head over there. I'm not sure what it is because I haven't looked in the website, but it is there waiting for you. See you in the comments. Mm -hmm.